This seminar will present an overview of the research conducted in GeoRef in the past decade. Research conducted in GeoRef include shallow and deep energy geotechnics engineering, foundation engineering, and verification process under hypergravity environments. GeoServ has carried out numerous research programs supported by the NSERV, MINTAC, and Industrial Research Funding, allowing the team to conduct cutting edge research, anticipate future research challenges, enhance the development of innovative uh, technologies, and train a new generation of high quality personnel. The team in GeoServ continues to engage and collaborate with public and private sector organizations pushing the boundaries of physical modeling research forward at an accelerated pace and providing the centrifuge model in um, proving that, that centrifuge modeling is uh, economical, effective, and high efficient experimental method. For this presentation, we have with us our professor, Professor uh, Gonzalo Sombrano Narvaez, who is an assistant professor of geotechnical engineering at the University of Alberta, specialized in subsurface energy research. Dr. Zambrano's early contribution to geotechnical engineering involved a, a revolt a, around geological CO2 storage, focusing on downhole instrumentation for measurement, monitoring, and verification protocols. Additionally, he is the president and co-founder of a Canadian consultant firm, GZN Consulting, that assist national and international organizations working on energy systems. Over the course of his career, Dr. Zambrano has published 23 articles in refer publications and 31 conference proceedings that has been our one and has been our one patent. Dr. Zambrano played a pivotal role in established advanced laboratory facilities. And uh, since 2018, Dr. Sobrano says as a corresponding member of the Canadian Geotechnical Society on the Technical Committee of Physical Modeling in Geotechnics, the TC 104. And with this introduction, please join me welcoming Dr. Sombrano. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I, I, I just want to test the audio for the crowd that is in person at U of A. Is that? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, fantastic. Okay, um, and thanks for the intro. Uh, we kind of missed some of the early, early um, abstract of today's presentation, but I maybe uh, use that opportunity just to echo for the online um, uh, participants. Today's truly is in a follow up presentation from the uh, Anne Canadian Geotechnics Summer Edition, where we kind of uh, uh, publish an article. Um, uh, celebrating the first decade of, of GeoSurf, the Geotechnical uh, Centrifuge Experimental Research Facility. Um, and we maybe uh, put some um, selected material that speaks about our journey of these uh, past uh, 10 years. And let me see if I can move with my slides. The um, appropriate to do some land acknowledgement, the University of Alberta its buildings, labs, and research stations are primarily uh, located on the traditional territory of, of uh, First Nations people, and that are part of the Treaty Six, Seven, and Eight home and homeland of Métis. Uh, the University uh, of Alberta respects the sovereignty, lands, histories, language, knowledge systems, and cultures of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit nations. Um, diving a little bit on, on the topic of today is uh, is focus on of one of the geo innovation centers that we have at the University of Alberta is uh, looking at USERF. Uh, through the course of the presentation, we will provide several examples of contributions that we have done um, on on physical modeling and even on the air, um, aerospace uh, testing uh, testing satellites. Uh, I don't think I have slides about the um, satellite cubes, but we have test sat satellites that are going to, the first satellite that the University of Alberta launched to space was tested at at, um, at GeoSurf, looking at the, um, the 10G level testing for all the phases of the cube. But um, most of the material that you're gonna see today is looking at um, um, contribution on, on what we call shallow energy and deep energy. 
And just to reflect on the other geo-innovation environments, advanced laboratory facilities that we have um, at U of A is looking at the GeoSurf, is an experimental reservoir mechanical facility that we can test up to uh, 280 degrees Celsius and three and a half kilometers deep. Uh, the, the premise of this, uh, it is to test at in-situ condition properties uh, for uh, not only stress and strain, but also multi-phase flow behavior. We also have a GeoSurf, which is the, uh, one of the um, innovations that we're gonna be chatting today, um, that is looking at how we can test physical models um, that help us uh, to validate or constrain numerical tools. And in the case for shallow energy, the ability to generate data in a fashion that we couldn't do it before. And we're gonna give some examples of that. We also have GeoPrint. We are the only universities that can print uh, rock uh, with the geomaterials and allow us to 3D print uh, systems to um, remove the variability of the samples and and print different configurations of rock types and discontinuities of, of different porosities. So that's another element. And hopefully in the next six months, we're going to announce um, the next, next phase of GeoPrint that allows us to uh, print multi-materials in the same printing bed, which is that's the next generation of, of GeoPrint. And of course, we have the modeling part, GeoRMT, that is looking at the geomechanical reservoir modeling technology, um, couple flow and, and geomechanics. Um, and we also doing lately, we're doing some work uh, in machine learning, looking at um, how we can create proxies for um, helping um, making informed decisions uh, for a CO2 storage. How and today, today again, we're going to be uh, focused on, on GeoSurf. And appropriately, uh, some of the um, um, recognition that I think is important to do that, um, that I think uh, Daniel was in mute, uh, the, the new building where the bean is located, well, new at that time, 2005 was when uh, we, the, we took possession of the uh, NREF. Um, in the, the vision of um, having a bean was, uh, was already uh, uh, painted by Dr. Morgiston. Uh, and, uh, and and we have even a slab that was uh, pre-designed for a, a bean. We we didn't know what type of bean. And and part of the um, CFI award of Professor um, Chalaturnik uh, include a, a technical bean centrifuge. And some of the images that you see here uh, is looking at the the um, excavations that we have to do in an existing facility. Uh, to we have to bring the city of Edmonton tunneling division and and back of um, 2010, 2011, to dig the shaft of what would be the home of our bean. Some uh, illustrations here of the bean coming out of the um, packages that, that came from a, a British manufacturer, uh, Broadbent. And we unloaded, and in some of the photos, I don't think we're gonna, ever going to see the bean in this <laughs> in this uh, location, um, in this at least in this configuration, because we're putting the bean together. Uh, we uh, Once the bean was in place, a, a, a mesh or screen system was uh, located to encapsulate the bean safely. The bean is sits uh, in a two meter reinforced concrete uh, slab uh, of a, a six meter diameter. That that's kind of is the dead weight of the centrifuge. So the bean again was established uh, operational uh, the latter part of 2012 and became uh, fully operation in 2013. And, and and that's when we started doing uh, some of the um, work that you will see today. We, our vision for GeoServe is, is, is encompassing these uh, four themes, uh, foundations, uh, shallow energy, deep energy, and a verification uh, tool. And some of the work that you will see today focus on the shallow uh, um, energy and deep energy and shallow energy more focus on um, tailings management and, and some of the work that I'm, um, future work, we, we're gonna be presenting some of this um, vision of the future in use as misery with the uh, acquisition of a, a happy gravity checking table. And, and, and that of that, some of the, my first independent answer program is looking at how we integrate uh, 3D printing media for boundary conditions for the pit uh, in pit, like the position, the position scenarios, and 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 looking at the the work 
that we have uh, le- um, contribute to tennis management. And for deep energy, if you have attended to the previous seminar, uh, it's very strongly correlated with the work that Daniel present. Um, and but I'm I'm not going to talk about his work because he already um, presented as as part of his master of science. But some of the work that we're looking at, um, uh, even a potential a, a nuclear um, boundary conditions and you term and um, deep reversible mechanics, particularly looking at failure modes in Caprock. So historically, since we're reflecting what um, uh, all the work that we we uh, managed to establish. Um, we have um, have um, a tally of um, twenty eight uh, publications, uh, three P three uh, PhD uh, dissertations complete and defense, and four MSCs programs as well. And if I have to distribute that into the thematics of the center, forty eight of this is shallow energy, forty one on deep energy topics, and one um, percent is in, in foundation. The premise of uh, why we do physical modeling. We do uh, physical modeling in most of our, our pra- pra- practice in genetic engineering. Typically, we do it in 1G, and that help us to, um, and we have this chart from Charles um, that help us to kind of visualize um, this narrative where typically uh, we, uh, we use uh, numerical tools uh, with even 1G model, but we, we can, we feedback our numerical tools for constitutive behavior, um, and properties that we can put in numerical tools to understand field process. Um, with the centrifuge, which is the new diagram here, allow us to have a, a direct correlation to f- physics that we see in our models with field behavior. And we're gonna maybe spend some time um, very shortly about the scaling, but in essence, we, we try to uh, mimic stress similarities in the field that help us to understand process in this small package of the models that we spin. Some of the deep thematic in deep energy um, are, are presented here. Some of these are um, uh, proposals that are ideas that are looking into um, nuclear modeling for of canisters in in situ conditions. Uh, some of this work has been leading by Japanese uh, research uh, power institute, um, and we hope we can maybe build up something here for U of A. We have work um, Daniel set up. I think looking at the production of oil sands and um, heavy oil, production of heavy oil or chops, um, may, ma- more looking at for the CO2 uh, post post chops, um, um, and also some more than that we're going to be presenting today is more looking at the Caprock um, at the latter part of the presentation, Caprock modeling. I have to be ca- cautious with my time. Um, so then uh, shallow energy, uh, mainly um, this is something the futuristic and very tangible. We have a CFI program that is um, looking at the acquisition of the CFI um, a checking table. And um, hopefully by 2020, then of this year to the next year, we want to have that system at U of A. And some of the work that has been done in the pretty much deck is looking at tennis management process. So if, um, um, if you're not familiar with the genetic centrifuge, um, uh, at least at first hand, uh, I'm not surprised because we maybe conceptually we have familiar subject technical engineers we are, but we um, there is only 34 centers in the world that has centrifuges, and Canada owns two beans and one drum and I think there is another one in Queens, um, very small and um, more in the geo- geological um, uh, department, um, but we we only have. Um, university owns um, the only Western Canada centrifuge bin. And we have this bin that allows us to package the, um, the model and spin up to 300, um, 282, which is 150 Gs, 150 times the gravity field. Uh, with that, we can tweak with this um, stress distributions of the, the, the model that allow us to mimic the, the stress profile in the field. So once again, very small models have the same magnitude of prototype. So the stress distribution between, maybe let's look at here a prototype, and, and the model in a G field is the same in magnitude. And that's the, the premise here. We can have a zero stress at the surface and a stress gradient and that uh, we can mimic in the centrifuge. Um, and that we can study many processes that deals with the genetic engineering. And the way to move between the model and the field is we use some scanning laws that um, 
the scientific community has um, uh, reviewed and adopted. Here are a list of some scientific scanning laws. Um, not going to go in, in order, but just, just to say it for one of the elements that we're going to be looking today for um, diffusion or consolidation, we use n square for time. And of course, the length is, is the, the stress um, distribution that we have here. So the length, the short, the, the, we have a shorter samples with the, the same stress and the field. Uh, some of the cell early cells that we developed in the center was um, um, designed and manufactured at U of A. Uh, we, we did a lot of, um, we still do a lot of automation because all of the testing has to happen on board with at the G level, the over testing. An example we have here, a, a tower, electromechanical actuator that allow us to do a T-bar penetrations for undrenched strengths. Uh, we have multiple pore pressure um, elements that allow us to measure pore pressure and targeting excess pore pressure values. And we can reconstitute the compressibility to the material um, for um, if you look at tailings um, electric uh, composition. So the how we the data that we we, we use for this um, it comes from you see the cells and and in essence you have here a little bit of animation that's looking at how uh, in, in the early work we we use um, onboard cameras and if you see here is the flight time and the hot time just the speed up we have to speed up the the, the animation so you can see the the journey but it's um so it's, it's in many hours of a spinning time that allow us uh, to track the settlement profile of this um tenants and material with a fine dominated material of tenants um to up to um uh, 45 years or 30, 35 years of, of performance with uh, several um, several hours of spinning. So we tracked down this interface um, and we plotted with time. And that was the early work that we did um, at the beginning of the journey. Now that we automatize, uh, we're using the Python scripts to, to do a visual analysis of um, AI to, um, algorithms that allow us to track down uh, the interface. And we soon going to be publishing an article that's looking into these um that and we're going to be providing open source for the um, code that um, we call a uh, geo geos track to allow it to track the settlement profile of columns uh, can be in 1g or high g's um and that's something that is is coming into the uh, public knowledge uh, we also again we do a, a test on board this is an example of a, a, a t-bar that allow us to do undrain shear strain measurements at stress conditions at that are similar to the field. Um, some of the other work we have contributed, it is uh, looking at um, uh, dry stacking. There has been a, in, in a lot of interest to, to pursue dry stacking in, in, in the world. Um, um, in any systems, uh, the, real, the real estate and the water management process are, it became, uh, dry stackings became an attractive solution. Uh, so we have to um, done some, some um, studies looking at dry stacking, and in this case, as you see here, is a beam. And we have the model that is already rotated, uh, but if you analyze the model, um, kind of a, just to flip in the images that you see here in the other part of the slides, and and we were start looking at the how we uh, create the physical model, and we. Specific. Okay, so we got to the animation there. We can uh, look at uh, multiple leaves. Um, for a particular um, condition, of moisture and solids contain, and you create a stacking and see if, um, um, in, and in addition to the building and uh, analyze the stability, we we did uh, also um, what you see here in this animation, a miniature CPT that allow us uh, with the pore pressure mentions and the tip, allow us to track profiles of uh, these multiple uh, lifts that we did um, to assess the um, shift resistance and pore pressure uh, as part of the characterizations of of the um, of these profiles that we did in multi lift, we also um, study um, a, a instability. If you're changing those um, water content values, uh, how much you have to change before you see the um, uh, failure? You know, this is liquefaction um, in these materials. Some some of kind of a critical state, some mechanics um, values that we also. Uh, part is with the laboratory conventional laboratory testing, one G testing to define this critical state line uh, of these materials. All the elements that we have used uh, GeoServe are looking at capping um, conditions 
where we are uh, looking at the models of the models to assess if the um, capping of different um, partial saturated materials are, are effective, the models of the models, if it's a need that we can use in the centrifuge. Um, so we did several models of the models to confirm that the um, capping with partial saturated materials is uh, um, follows the scaling laws. And we did some testing just to study the, the benefit of capping. So we see here, the dot line is not capping and the, the models of the models of all of these multiple yield models that resemble the same prototype have um, uh, a contribution in terms of performance. And, and more of that, you can strain as well. Other work that we, we have done um, uh, for us is, is looking at the um, the um, uh, multi lift. So there's uh, there's always the desire to maximize your dry capacity of the dry stacking uh, in terms of um, dry density in the pit or in your cell uh, fields field performance. So we did a study where we have to um, analyze uh, what would be different the lifting or the schedule in many years in the next fifteen years, um, and what would be the performance of um, the in this case was targeting a pit configuration, but in this was looking at only cell performance um, with the multiple uh, systems, multiple um, uh, recipes. We did this uh, work in, 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 in one month. We managed to screen more than 30 samples, 30, 30 different recipes uh, that uh, eventually uh, there's a um, uh, dollar value, like it's economical uh, benefit to define uh, many of these um, elements did not perform perform very well at the beginning, but then it met at the similar performance of other uh, recipes. So that's that's a, a value of a physical model that help to inform uh, um, make informed decisions about um, how um, a mining and management can be uh, complete in a very timely fashion. So many of these tests uh, result, and again in one month. This multi lift with 30 recipes, we managed to screen and test uh, these recipes uh, for um, to um, inform a decision. So we characterize uh, the ability of having um, centrifuge modeling because our, there's there's some ratios between sample height and and, and rotation to get the scaling loss right. Um, geotechnical centrifuges are within the less than 10 percent. Uh, so your samples are relative to the size of the machine and very small, but allow us uh, to measure uh, pore pressure, density values to get compressibility parameters uh, that in, in, in a conventional way, many of these points are LSEs, loadings, a different stage. So you have a cloud of, of information here that you can use to characterize the compressibility parameters of the material that is it represents multiple LSEs, different loading conditions. In this case, we do it in one test. Uh, has some, some work has been complete analyzing and comparing compressibility parameters of centrifuge and, and LSEs and, and, and very good agreement both of them. And then we can we can use that to um, interpret uh, hydraulic conductivity and uh, using the compressibility and back analyzing the interface sediments. That's also, we did that. Um, there's another article that we're uh, um, publishing, looking at the, um, we use um, Python scripts to history match, and we can um, run 1000 simulations to history match um, the performance of um, the test to the model and to get a, 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 a more appropriate hydraulic conductivity estimates um, using um, a history match. In the past, we have to do manual interactions and uh, there are most we can do the same level of iteration, but it will take us uh, a, at least a week. With this, we can do it in, in, within the Python script that we develop. We can do that in, in half an hour. Looking at other examples that um, that um, the user has um, work is more on the deep energy. Um, one of the daily work looking at um, rock engineering process, there are other researchers have explored this area. Uh, maybe Manchester University was a pioneer that is looking at um, rock mechanics into the centrifuge. And so we're dealing, dealing uh, heading on um, some of these efforts, mainly because we're interested in, in failure. Uh, the boundary conditions of this centrifuge box, of, which we call a strong box, it is the free boundary. 
there's you can move deflectees um and and the stress distribution can be ordered but the boundary the upper boundary condition of of the ability of the material to deflect freely with um same stress distributions in the field that's a very powerful boundary conditions to explore failure and and typically you think you need to explore failure in real life and do um back analysis of how the failure occurred given that we saw the failure mechanisms that we understand um the if it's a shear zone developer or other uh, buckling or anything that you see in the field we can back analyze that to insert properties uh centrifuge model and allow us to do that um in in a, a safe and i guess economical way to to do um, explore failure mechanics in the centrifuge same scanning laws that we're going to be looking at here this is the work that we did for deep energy we, we were um, looking at the failure mechanics of of over consolidated material uh, as analog of a cap rock and how this system will will fail um there's a lot of the thermal resources or structure thermal extraction resources that are looking at um cap rock as one of the main seal that uh, contains um this thermal extraction um and that's kind of the premise of of why we want to study this this process uh, also the this evidence of failures as, as everybody uh, is aware of Jocelyn is one of them um that these systems can fail if you push them uh, to the limits and, and some of the work that we have done that maybe speaks about their the analogy of why the systems fail. There's a PhD program that we did looking at numerical modeling, but it was we were more, more interested in the num num numerical aspect. And can we explore um, centrifuge tests to, to explore failure of the system to understand failure mechanics to understand how these over considered materials behave if you change the loading rate. Uh, and and that's that that's the premise of this work. Uh, for that, we have to build an analog material. We explore more than um, uh, Dr. Chi Chia, the Shen Lo Chia, explore um, uh, roughly uh, more than two hundred samples, two hundred fifty samples, to explore uh, what would be the analog of um, over considered material that we can uh, synthetically produce in the lab, and repeat produce to the, that behaves over considered clays. We design uh, part of the MSc program, uh, MSc students inside the system, a uh, electromechanical actuator that mimics the deflection of the um, pressures beneath the cap rock that result in, a, in a em emulating the thermal the steam chamber deflection that occurs underneath the cap rock. Um, we're going to study some conceptual models that people have presented. And we, of course, we had to compare laboratory from natural um, shield, um, over considered clear shells uh, with uh, our um, synthetic uh, clear water shell material, which uh, help us to pin a particular recipe. We, uh, again, spin centrifuge with storm, with storm box. We use, we have to keep some boundary conditions of wire pressure. So we use a system that is called Marriott wire. Uh, the um, Marriott bottle of wire is in a it's just a physics that only happens in the centrifuge that we can connect. Uh, it happens in 1G, but it's magnified in, in the centrifuge. You can connect and maintain boring con uh, pore water conditions at the base while the, the box is deflecting um, underneath. So creating, we don't want to create an undrained response. We're going to maintain a pore water pressure at the base. Um, so we did some pair with this with a numerical uh, program as well. And we just captured this, what happens here in the centrifuge with the cap rock. So the animation that you see here uh, is a uh, is a centrifuge uh, spinning at um, um, uh, I think 100, 110 g's 100, 110, 100, 110 times the gravity and you see it slightly moving so barely moving this 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 deflection and it's uh, early enough you start seeing some deflections of these shears and compression and tensile failures that occur in the system. Um, we continue the test, but in, 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 because if we're, our ba lower boundary condition was a fluid uh, with maintaining pore pressure, um, the failure mechanics will be completely different if you see in a steam or a more gas phase at the base. It may be, uh, the test will be done by them, but we want to constrain the physical model, which is very uh, well boundary condition. So, but it, we can keep running the test and you see the development of the tensile. Uh, which is a classical um you expect numerical modeling and this develop a shear zone which is not a strange for um uh, over considered material and the question mark is this tensile or shear uh, cracks driven 
So that's that's a, a, the the model represents a twenty meter um, cap rock over the overbone represents a hundred meters deep. And we did some PIB analysis of the different models. Shen Long uh, he complete several of these tests. They're very um, labor intensive uh, program, and, and and I think there was the intent to do um, multiple scenarios, multiple loadings. We had to recreate the same uh, synthetic material and test different loading conditions. And, and surprising enough, yes, strain softening. Um, different loading rates um, it, it is is observed in this class of materials uh, and all depends if um, if you load it fast if you load it slow if you if you're um you know you're doing intermediate loading um uh, so that's kind of the 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 work that um Shalom was presenting it was uh, in a presenting international physical model and geotechnics in Korea uh, um in 2022 uh, to, uh, to a year ago, more than a year ago some some premise and findings still a lot of questions that we 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 have um and it messes mainly with the contribution shear shear and, and tensile in these materials but if um, very good findings and we paired that with an medical um uh, program with the flag and and very 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 interesting um outcomes looking at failure modes in this class of materials which is something that we're going to produce is kind of a validating results that will help us to numerical efforts. Um, I'm very conscious with time. I don't want to run over um, and since this are kind of a launch break for many, many of you. Um, the kind of where we're heading in the future, that's kind of the session where I'm going to be talking. Um, so we we have this capacity that we have built in GeoSurf to um, understand how um, tenants uh, management process can be um, added to the system and contribute and and provide a, a informed decisions in a, a timely fashion. We also have this geoprint. So we what um, my intent in um, it is to merge uh, connect these two dots and study other process uh, that uh, we see now uh, as part of a standard practice, status quo for a um, consolidating in, in, in modeling um, is a um, all of the, uh, it's a one dimensional conservation theory, um, but there's a lot of uh, uh, contributions to the pit boundary, um, uh, if it's an impit deposit. And I wanna explore boundary conditions uh, into this impit clearly uh, from our uh, prototype um, proof of concept that we use space wide and markers to define the position. This shear is, is happening in these zones um, we're going to see if we can understand how we can create um, um, some contribution or how we can model this process that is shear driven as well in addition to consolidation. And you see here is a capping exercise that was done uh, and, and this differential settlement is already contributing an effect into the capping um, program. So that's something that we're, we're heading. The other elements of where my vision uh, is is moving into this um, as uh, five themes uh, from pore scale uh, to soil structure interaction, rock mass modeling, and a, a fragility study looking at the, uh, the effect of as um, um, earthquake in seismic events, either natural or induced, into the um, structures. Uh, looking at the embankments um, and and many of that, not looking at from the point of view um, of a which is the, the um, contribution of is repeatability. If what happens if you constantly one event, you know, many of these um, energies will dissipate into this um, um, just structure or just structures. But oh, studies. Sorry if I scare you that, but that's another case that happens here in the pilot. Um, but, the, but the contribution is that can we put that into a physical model to explain um, tools? So that's yeah, what we're working on and, and filing. Um, Filing as well as part of that. So sorry, sorry for the noise, but it's just so if you if, if you get scared for the noise, sorry for that. Is is that how the centrifuge found? When we put in a, a on board, we have a here of the centrifuge uh, and the other other image Sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's very loud and I, I thought it was not that loud, but just to give you um, um, a tangible experience of how the centrifuge um, sounds was the, the idea, but it was maybe too loud. Sorry for that. And of, and of course, the it is it is a it's a tool, it's a model tool, and and you know it's the cliche sentence that all, all, all the models are wrong, and and there's there's some um a, a advantage that eloquent of speaking about listing some of them, um that um we use and we should use all our our tools at our disposal, from triaxials to LCs to the monumental tools, centrifuge is one of them. And there's some also disadvantage as well to physical modeling that uh, some of them are some limitations. Uh, uh, for uh, if you look at segregations, uh, just some enhanced segregation particles for some conditions, not all of them. You have to have um, uh, uh, some conditions of SFR and um, fine dominating materials, but uh, some for some tennis material segregation could be an issue. Um, and we have studied significantly that so those boundaries. In fact, Sorta and Dr. Sorta start exploring that, and we continue did some work in looking at uh, what materials are suitable for for centrifuge modeling. If you look at the uh, um, tailings, um, and and again, just a list of things that I hopefully this this slide is like is going to be public or be or it'll be for sure on the on the record on the on the proceedings of uh, these seminars um but it's just leave it there um I think I think I think I just come to to an end um gonna also acknowledge of the um, some of the persons of the work that I have present uh, and um there's a lot of more people that maybe you meet here when they, when we're looking at the, the team but most of the material that present are the individuals are are here in this slide maybe an opportunity maybe to 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 provide um, some Questions and answers, or uh, um, um, if if that was generated to the set of the slides I present here, Daniel. Thank, thank you very you. much, Doctor Gonzalo. So now we have the time for the questions. Uh, is there any question here in the room? If there is any question? Let me know. Or if there is any question online, you can raise your hand. Any question here? Can I ask Dr. Wirtz a question? Yeah, but give me a moment. Okay, we have a question. Yeah. Yeah, hi. So my question for you is Dr. Wirtz's question. So what? And we can have this conversation and we can just go on the page. So why, why do you care about the work that's happening in I am um, Daniel, you may have to repeat the question because I couldn't hear it. Does it can you hear me here? Yep. So the question I'm asking is Dr. Rick's question. So what? Well, so what depends on what uh, process that you you look at that, and all depends if um, uh, many of these elements that I present are industry driven questions from uh, the ability for them to make um, informed decisions in the timely matter, telling management. Um, conventionally, many of these tests that we generate in in days would have taken months to industry. So uh, many of the industry partners that have come for uh, answers, if you look at tennis management, um, is because uh, we provide uh, information that um, can contribute in um, an informed making decision for them to to do the process. But uh, that's that's one of them. Each of these processes that we I, I present here has um, has different so what. And may, in my my opinion, uh, physical modeling is a tool that we can use to study process uh, that physical uh, numerical models sometimes struggle or, or not enough evidence um, that you may see in a physical model that is no phys uh, evidence of, of those process occurring in the field. Um, you want to do a physical model that um, represent the same boundaries and see if you can 
use that as to validate in an environment that is very well constrained. Properties known, stress fields are known, can those physical models predict what we see in, in the centrifuge? Awesome. That's what I was expecting to hear, but I love you. Any other question here? Okay. I guess we don't have more questions. So thank you very much, Professor Gonzalo. And see you everyone again next week. Okay. See you. Thanks.